your leadership, your guidance for me has helped me steer the ship of the youth of our party. A challenging one. As you know, we young people are very boisterous. We have so much energy. There are things that the women would keep quiet about, but the youth, it's one thing we get to spark. We have our moments, but we also have a way to come together and forge ahead to find better solution. And the mentorship that you provided for me over the years have helped me to be able to steer the ship of the youth wing. And so, Mr. President, the second focus of our visit here, who have led my deputy youth leader and all the youth leaders from the 36th state, is because of what Martin Luther King calls the fierce urgency of now. Mr. President, all of us in this room, we had what Winston Churchill called blood, tears, and sweat in the last election. We fought vigorously to ensure that we delivered our polling unit. They abused us. They insulted us. We went to the crooks and cradles. I, for example, single-handedly went to 33 states of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, leading rallies and going into grassroots on canoes on road. And I can tell the stories of all of my youth leaders, for example, GD of four in, uh, in Alhambra State, who had to risk the fact that it was in an hip hop control state. And even the candidate of the Labour Party was from his state and defied all that to continue to mobilize for us. Many of them, even from across the Southwest, some of them we stayed without governors like Oyo State, River State, for example, and many others, ensuring that they delivered their polling units. Blood, sweat, and tears. And we have now come, based on the agitation of our young people across the country, to say we have worked. You told us to vote for our tribe, we vote for our children. Don't forget us, carry us along. Every day, I, and I'm sure my other youth leaders, they even called me leader. What is going on? They have started compiling names for board and parastata. Why are you not fighting for us? What are you going to get for us? And I said, no problem. I will take you to the place where it is being done. Let us come and meet the commander in chief. <laughs> President, a committee was set up to be chaired by my Egbon to look into that board composition. We note carefully that no young person is represented on that community, on that committee. And we are demanding, sir, that you kindly look into that and have a nomination of a male and a female. Not just any male and female, sir. Youth wing of the party. I will volunteer to serve alongside any female that would love to join us. <laughs> To make sure that we can push for the interest, because I went to 33 states personally, apart from traveling, and they came to us, and they will keep calling. So we would love to have representation on that committee to push, so that we can go back to them in 2027 and say, "But we did this back for you, and we did this back for you, sir." I also want to note that there are interventions and palliatives being introduced to ensure that the impact of this fuel subsidy is mitigated. We would also like to have young people <coughs> across the country at the various level of implementation, including some of our youth and total persons in each of the states. We have the young people who have capacity, who have experience, who have the prerequisite qualification, and they will do very well. Just tell us what you need. We will bring the CV to you. President, in the manifesto, we promised young people the Presidential Youth Advisory Council. We would like to work with the Chief of Staff and with your office to sit together and look at how we can implement that and ensure that we have a very robust, representative Presidential Youth Advisory Council that carries everyone along, not just the technocrats, but also the young people who went to the nooks and crannies to fight for our party in the last election. Mr. President, finally we note that our young people form about 75% of our population. There are over 7,000 appointments in government, either boards, or status agencies, and many other things across. We, as the youth of the party, 
are requesting that you kindly, as you begin to fill those positions, consider at least 15 percent. We're not going to be like the woman asking for 35. At least 15 percent. <laughs> And when we say young people, in particular the youth of the party, party. who are card carrying members, so that in 2027 they can go back and proudly mobilize additional votes yes. for us, yes. for your second time. Yes. I want to thank you, Daddy, again for seeing us, for carrying us along. We know and we are assuring Nigerians who are calling us every day that Fred is now 617 Naira. We tell them it will always get very tight before it gets better. Mm. Yes. We trust and we have full confidence in the man on the steering. We know that he has the full intention to ensure that Nigeria is on the path of greatness. It's not after Nigeria's resources, he knows what to do, but he needs to ensure that he takes a decision that will give us long-term benefit and make Nigeria like America and put an end to Jackpot Syndrome. Thank you, Daddy. God bless you. <laughs>